Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this time it is going to be an updated Dragoonity deck profile for post-Blazing Vortex. Now, we don't have the new support just yet. We're just under two months away from that in Ghosts from the Past in April. That is when we get the new Dragoonity support, and that is when I will be doing deck profiles of the deck with the new support. So stop asking. <laughs> Basically, I'm fiending for building this deck in current format because I want to be able to actually play it in a relevant space even though there's no events going on there's there's nothing really to like like i don't know what's the word i'm looking for push for as far as trying to be uh, meta relevant because the meta is sort of in a state of flux because there are no events um like the meta is established but like there's no events so it doesn't matter it's really strange but anyway this is not a deck list with the new support because that comes out in april and i'll be covering that in detail when we get to it but what this is is a deck profile for a new card that we got in blazing vortex which i'm pretty sure you know what it is it's pot of prosperity which significantly boosts the deck's consistency to a level that makes it better overall in many areas and i have some numbers that i can give you to like like explain that throughout the deck list all sort of stuff it's really late at night i've been working all day uh it, it's hard for me to speak right now but anyway what i've got for you is a deck list, main extra inside that I'm going to show you for Dragoonies, post Blazing Vortex, doesn't have the new support in it yet, but if you're interested in Dragoonies with the new support, you can definitely check out other videos I made on the channel, or if you want to see my videos when they come up in April when the new support drops, then definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new here, and ding that little notification bell. I'd love to welcome you on board, show you other videos as well. I definitely need to put more time back into this channel, I say that a lot, but I mean eventually it will stick when i say it but so with that out of the way i'm going to show you the main deck uh give you like information on card choices uh mathematics and all that other sort of stuff as i go so the main deck is actually 43 cards which i've come to determine after i make all my card choice like justifications and reasons almost every deck i play ends up being 43 cards so i've come to determine that if my deck list isn't 43 cards it means i actually just didn't try building the deck hard enough like, it's just one of those little player habits that I've only just now identified. Um, and this deck list is no different. This is a 43 card deck list. So honestly, you could play this as a 40 card deck list without Pot of Prosperity in it. I wouldn't recommend it. But if you're someone who's like playing on a budget and doesn't have Pot of Prosperity, even though you should have that card to play any deck at this point in the game, um, you could just take those cards out of this list and play it as is. I, again, wouldn't recommend it. But anyway, three copies of Dragoonity Sendus and one copy of Dragoonity Ducks. Uh, these are your insane starters. Sinidus is a built-in Dragon Ravine, sort of, because it starts plays by itself. Whereas Ducks, this card only combos if you have Ravine or a card that specifically synergizes with it, but you still play it because it is still good in certain instances where you have hands where Sinidus would be getting rid of far too many cards. Like if you open with Ravine and then try to go for a Sinidus route, you're literally getting rid of so many cards out of your hand. Whereas if you open like Ravine Tuner plus an Extender, you could just get Ducks instead by discarding the Tuner and you have a little bit better card economy there. So it works out pretty well in your favor overall. For the rest of the Wing Beasts, uh, one copy of Blackling Zephyrus the Elite, two copies of Garuda the Wind Spirit, just a generic good extender. Uh, also combos well with Foolish or Dragon Shrine um, to banish Tempest, search a tuner or an extender, like Mistleton, uh, and you can like normal summon the tuner and turns it into like a pseudo starter. Makes it sort of like a ducks like interaction without needing Dragon Ravine. Uh, but then we have two copies of Mist Valley Baby Rock as well. This card is absolutely really good. Uh, it's just good for extension through Gator. It's good for a multitude of reasons. I've considered playing three of it, um, but it's just, it's good enough at two. Uh, it's definitely a card you want to play more than one of uh, because of Odd Eyes Revolution Dragon, but you probably don't need the third. At least not until like the new support drops, then it gets better to play three of it, but even then, probably still wouldn't play the third. There's probably better extenders. But anyway, for Dragon Tuners, three copies of Dragoonity Phalanx and two copies of Koos. Uh, not really any reason to play the third copy of Koos. The third copy of Koos doesn't, like, do anything other than just contribute to worse hands overall. Um, you just need to have one in deck to be able to get off Lance most of the time. So if you start with one, you need the other one in deck. That's the only reason why I'm not playing one of it. Uh, but Phalanx is just the superior tuner overall because it accesses more cards. Uh, gives you access into more play lines. Um, Koos is literally just to go into Barca and that's it. But you do need copies of it to access but if you opened like ravine plus coos and you do a ducks play line uh coos is a worse card than flanks just overall like it actually like affects the play line slightly but 
Anyway, carrying on, one copy of Dragoony Armor Missile Tin. This card's not that great. Uh, it gets better with Glow, obviously, but right now, playing it, it almost feels like it's missing an effect because Glow gives it a secondary effect of special summoning whatever you equip to it. Um, but, I mean, it's an okay extender. You play it because of Tempest. Uh, you still play it because of Tempest because Tempest can be searched uh, with uh, by banishing it off Garuda or Gold Sark. Um, or you could just draw Tempest and discard it off of Gaydurg, adding a Garuda, and then like getting missiles in that way and comboing that way. There's a few different options. Uh, Red Eyes Darkness Metal Dragon is still played in this version of the deck. This card basically goes away once we get the new support because Leviton is just far superior to this card once we get the new support for a multitude of reasons. But until we get the new support, we need to be summoning this card off of Atum because we have to be using Gaydurg's effect one extra time that we don't have without glow in the game with glow not in the game the the number of gator searches that we'd be able to uh perform if this was Leviton is only two searches um which might be fine if we were just doing a combo build that just builds a board and doesn't uh, rely on searching cards like lechery to hand but because we're specifically trying not to lose to forbidden droplets triple tactics talent dark ruler no more we're trying to lock the opponent out of those powerful spells with the Morphage Lechery, so we need access to three Gaiderg searches a turn, which we can do because Gaiderg is a soft once per turn. But, continuing on, one of the best extenders in this deck, Odd Eyes Revolution Dragon. This is definitely a card that if you do not own right now, you should consider picking up. Uh, this card is insane for this deck as well as for like pendulum variants and stuff like that. I don't see this card not going up in like the future. Like honestly, I feel like this card could easily just go up in price. Uh, but this card is a fantastic extender for this deck because you can discard it to add Dark Worm, or you can, uh, which has synergy with Ravine obviously, or you can use it in the scale to bring back one of your Dragoonity Synchros, namely Gaederg. So it allows you to you know extend through that. Um, so that's actually really nice. But then speaking of Dark Worm, one copy of Dark Worm, one copy of Gate Zero. Um, this card is like a really good extender, but you have so many cards to access it in the deck naturally with like Ravine, with uh, Revolution Dragon discarding to add it, with uh, Dark with uh, Dragon Shrine and uh, Foolish. Uh, I just don't see the need to play any more of it. Um, and Gate Zero is strictly only played because sometimes it's the free discard for Ravine, or sometimes you actually are scaling this card and pendulum summoning like a face up dark worm out of your extra deck that you already made uh, like a synchro with um, to use as another extender because the entire combo of the deck is searching for a morphage lechery which is a five scale so sometimes you're literally scaling this and then scaling lechery and penduluming um, the dark worm out as another extender but food for thought last uh, two like monster monsters in the main deck are the basic joint win condition of the deck a Morphage Lechery and a Morphage Goliath. The entire point of the deck is to summon Goliath and then scale a Morphage Lechery. Lechery says while Goliath is on the board, your opponent, well, both both players rather, can't activate spell cards or use the effects of spells. And Goliath, while it's on the board in the monster zone, neither player can summon monsters from the extra deck. That's fine. We've summoned everything we want. We've got multiple negates on board plus Goliath and Lechery. So the entire point of the deck is no extra deck, no spells, multiple negates. So the opponent is, we're trying to make the game as unfun for the opponent as possible. But we're playing some hand traps because I don't want to just get outright blown out by Virtual World and Drytron. Um, two copies of Droll and two copies of Ash. Ash is the most okay hand trap strictly across the board um, against a very, like, a wide uh, variety of decks. So that's why I'm playing, like, two of it. Uh, Droll is really good against Drytron and is at least passable against virtual world because virtual world starts its turns with like pot of like prosperity or pot of desires or whatever and then that deck also like usually searches once with lulu and then once with uh the quinlong or whatever it's called the spell engrave um can't remember exactly uh but this card is like passable as a hand trap to be maining for that matchup but mainly i don't want to get blown up by drytron um drytron and virtual world are definitely the harder matchups because like you can't play combo against combo and expect it to not go well um if and expect it to go well if you're not hand trapping them but that's all the monsters that is uh 28 monsters if memory serves including the four hand traps for spells three copies of dragon ravine one copy of terraforming to be the fourth copy of dragon ravine we have to play set rotation and magical midbreaker field because we don't have copies of cards like remus with a new support card um so we need to up the account of ravine as much as possible and then for obvious reasons for consistency boosting we are playing three copies of pot of prosperity now you may be thinking like does this card really help that much the answer is yes even though our extra deck is very tight 
there is always three things we can banish, depending on what your hand looks like. You can always look at your extra deck and banish three cards. So we're usually banishing three with Pot of Prosperity. If you're using it at the beginning of your turn, you have so many good probability numbers that you can like look at. This is a 43 card main deck, as I've said. The chance of opening Dragon Ravine, one of these five cards, Set Rotation, Ravine, or Terraforming, in a 43 card deck is 47.86%. Uh, it's just a, like a couple percent down from if you were playing a 40 card deck, but like the percentages there, I'm not too worried about. Now, if you were to activate Pot of Prosperity without opening Dragon Ravine and you know, reveal three, your chances of seeing Ravine in those next three cards is another 35.32% chance. Just very, very simple hypergeometric calculations of if there's 38 cards left in my deck because I've drawn my opening hand and I Pot of Prosperity banishing three, there is a 35% chance of there being a Ravine, one of those five cards, in that stack. And that doesn't sound too impressive, but you have to consider that this is a combo deck that operates on multiple moving parts and pieces. We're not only looking for Ravine at all, because if we're looking for Ravine, that means we either opened Synodus or we opened a Tuner, because we need the Ravine to combo with those cards. So instead of looking at Pot of Prosperity as we're looking for one of our five copies of Ravine, we're actually looking for ravine plus either a tuner or send it us to complete the package of what we have if we have a uh if we have a tuner in our hand one of our phalanxes and cooses and we're activating prosperity trying to find a ravine or a send that's actually eight cards in our deck we're looking for which is a 51.87 percent chance of seeing one of those eight cards in the next three reveals off the pot of prosperity if we're holding a send and we're looking for a corresponding tuner or ravine so that we can discard a card and get a tuner, that's 10 cards in our deck because there's five ravine and five tuners. And that is a 61% chance of seeing one of those off of excavating only three off of prosperity. Now, if we were capable of formulating the deck down into a more streamlined combo that only needed nine cards instead of 10 to 11 every single time, uh, if we were able to do that, and we were capable of uh, banishing six off prosperity then the numbers would obviously be insanely higher than that um but like this this card is absolutely nuts and then there's obviously the instances of you open combo plus pot of prosperity um you do full combo and then you pot of prosperity just banish three from your extra deck and try to dig for an ash or a droll just to make your ending board better uh like it's just this card is obviously really good you should definitely be playing this card i feel like this card literally goes in every deck uh, it's definitely like one of those cards that comes around every once in a while that's like play this in legitimately everything because it makes everything including rogue decks I think it benefits rogue decks an insanely like high amount for you to not be playing it definitely should be but like I said this is a 43 card main deck so if you wanted to just take this deck list and not play these cards I mean it's already a 40 card list like I said I wouldn't recommend it but you could Anyway, continuing on, one copy of Dragoon Divine Lance, one copy of Gold Sark. Gold Sark for Tempest, obviously. I kind of wish Tempest was at multiples, so I couldn't draw them together, but it's whatever. This is your go-to search off of Romulus right now because we don't have Glow. If you open it, it's fine, but you really don't want to. Um, you just have to combo a specifically different way. But carrying on, more one ofs Dragon Shrine, Foolish Burial. Uh, trimmed these down to make room for Prosperity because Prosperity gets you into the cards you're actually using to start combos, whereas these were like pseudo starters. Prosperity is digging you for real starters, like actual starters. Uh, and then Monster Reborn and Call by the Grave rounds out the rest of the one ofs. That is the 43 card main deck. The extra deck is as follows one copy of Dragoon Knight Gaederg. Uh, I've had to explain to a lot of people recently in YouTube comment sections how soft once per turns work. This is not a hard once per turn card. Uh, you should definitely look up the difference of soft once per turn versus hard once per turn. It's an entire, like, Yu Gi Oh! wiki article that you can read that makes it easy to understand yes i can use this like three times in the same turn as long as it is leaving the board and coming back it gets treated as a new monster that hasn't used its effect yet but so gator one copy of dragoon Knight luin which is uh mandatory in uh this version until we get glow two copies of dragoon Knight barca one copy of crystal wing synchro dragon borlode savage dragon and dragoon Knight ascalon are the synchros that are played the one exceeds that's played is a uh, Hyrat Dragon King of Atum. And then for Lynx, we have Pisti, Elpi, Dragoon Knight Romulus, Crystron Halka Fibrax, Hyratic Seal of the Heavenly Spheres, Triple Burst Dragon, and Darkness Metal, the Dragon of Dark Steel. Uh, now, if you are wondering what you banish off of Pot of Prosperity, 
I'm going to tell you. The three that you banish, you almost always banish one Barca because it only comes up in certain combos um, that you would know that you would have access to immediately. Uh, so you banish that, you can banish Ascalon, because Ascalon, if you're going first, you're not going to be making this card, it like never comes up. So like these are immediately the first three that you can just consider like to be always banishes. Uh, Hieratic Seal, this and this. Now, if you're looking at your hand and you see a Senatus in your hand and you know for a fact you're going to be normal summoning Senatus, you could banish Christian Halka Fibrax instead of either Ascalon or the Heavenly Spheres. Because if you use Senatus effect, you're locked into dragons from your extra deck, so you can't summon this anyway, so you might as well just banish it. So, like, this is a card for, like, breaking boards when you're going second, and this card is a card that you can't use under certain uh, cir uh, circumstances, and this is a card that is combo-specific. So it's like, these are, like, this, with these, with this being, like, a flexible spot, are the cards that you can always banish. Like, these two you can literally always banish if you're going first, and then these two, the Halka Fibrax and the Hieratic Seal, are, um, are flip-flopped, depending on what your hand looks like. Uh, but so it's super easy for you to banish three, like every single time. You can literally look at your hand and you can be like, oh, I just do not need <laughs> the Halka Fibrax, or I do not need this because I, I'm, I can't end on it. <laughs> like, I'm not going to end on it. It's not going to be that big of a deal, right? So, like, it's super simple. Basically, the only, like, cards you have to keep in your extra deck are, uh, like, and honestly, you could make merit, uh, you can make, like, an argument, like, to get rid of Darkness Metal as well. Like, you could actually, like, get up to, like, six banishes if you just, like, needed to. Because you could just, like, if you look at your hand and your opening hand has Sinidus in it, but has, like, literally nothing else that you're playing with, um, and you need to dig for six, like, you could just banish these five and then find something else to banish in here. Um, you can banish Lewin in every hand that you have access to uh, to Mistleton. So if you open Mistleton or Goldsark, every hand that you have access to Mistleton, you could also banish Lewin. So you could actually legitimately banish all six of these if your hand like had Senatus plus Mistleton in it, but you needed a tuner or else you cannot play. You could actually legitimately banish all six of these um, and still full combo with these last nine. Um, it's actually really, really interesting. But anyway, with that out of the way, Side deck time. Side deck is uh, just catered towards not losing to dumb shit and the meta. Very simple, right? Two copies of Nibiru because I feel like these uh, like are really good against like other rogue decks. It's not really that great against the meta, but it's good against other kind of weird ones uh, that I wouldn't want to lose to. But specifically, like Lancia, obviously this is for a virtual world. Uh, the third copy of Droll and Lock, this is obviously for Drytron, right? Uh, and then for our back row decks, we're playing Triple Lightning Storm, Harpy's Feather Duster, and Red Reboot. Uh, this is, like, pretty standard. You're just trying to blow out the back row and, and then do your plays. And then there's some cards that I have in my side deck for, like, when I'm going first or when I need to swap for a matchup. One copy of Amorphage Age Greed because the Lechery Lock is pretty weak against trap decks. Um, I still leave the Lechery in, but I put the Greed in as well because uh, with Revolution Dragon being an option... Uh, with Pot of Prosperity at the end of a combo being an option. There's a bunch of different options for you to be able to add a Dragon Pendulum from deck to hand. Uh, and Lechery is one of those, as well as Greed. So, like, you could full combo with a Revolution Dragon in hand, get to uh, Lechery, and then uh, Revolution Dragon for Greed, or other way around. But basically, Greed is Lechery, but for traps. So, like, I side this in against trap matchups, like Geist, um, and, like, uh, Eldlich and other stuff that, like, I'm not too worried about spells. Um... And so, like, you just do this turn one instead of Lechery, because then it shuts off all traps. So you do Goliath, Greed, um, and then sometimes you also have Lechery in there, too. Sometimes you end on Lechery, Greed, Goliath, a few negates, and you're just like, this is how Yu-Gi-Oh! is played. Um, but then another three cards that are just really good for going first that I can, like, take the hand traps out against when, like, I'm siding for going first specifically is uh, three copies of Solemn Judgment. Uh, because the only way that, like, you can really, like, get your board broken outside of these powerful spells that you're already turning off with Lechery is uh, you can get like Sphere Moted obviously, but that's going to suck regardless. There's no way you can play around that unless you're playing a Pointers. Uh, but I felt like this card was a little bit better suited than a Pointer, uh, specifically because like uh, like you could lose to multiple evenly matched because Savage can only negate one of them. Stuff like that. Like, you could be playing a pointer, but sometimes you just don't end on hands with this deck because you just use your entire hand to combo because it's a little bit inefficient because we don't have the new support. Once the new support comes out, we combo with less cards in our hand. Uh, so, like, it really is just, it's really just a thing that sort of depends. 
Um, but like I said, these are just cards that I put in when I'm going first, so I can take those hand traps out. Um, and like, I almost put this in in every matchup anyway, uh, because I could just, you know, turn off someone's like imperms and evenly matches that they're going to use for like my Warlord Savage or whatever, right? It just, it really is something that like, um, that it comes up. It comes up, but it's not enough to main it. It's good to put it in against every trap deck, but like, I'd rather be maining the hand traps so I don't get blown out by other combo decks. Right, but that is basically the entire list. Um, main extra inside, which is something that I haven't provided you in a while, a side deck for a Dragoonie deck because I haven't taken them nearly as seriously enough to warrant like building a whole side deck and like building the side deck based around siding patterns that I'm doing, like pl actually playing this deck. But Power of Prosperity has legitimately got me like just playing this deck a lot because I'm playing a lot of rogue decks with it, Ritual Beasts, uh, like. Uh, a bunch of stuff. Um, obviously not playing World Chalice with it because um, we're trying to draw cards in that deck and uh, Pot of Prosperity has some words on it that say uh, you don't get to draw <laughs> the turn that you use this card. Uh, but yeah, you should definitely, definitely experiment with this in every rogue deck that you possibly play. Um, especially if the deck uh, that you're playing is uh, very optimized as far as what its combos can do. I highly recommend you give it a try because this card is literally fantastic in every way shape and form but that is the entire deck list this video has been long i hate the fact that i literally do not stop talking but apparently some people like that sorry anyway that is going to be it for this video as always guys thanks for watching let me know what your thoughts comments questions concerns all sort of nonsense are in the comments down below if you're interested my discord link is also in the description uh there's like some Dragoonity talk that happens there, but mostly we just talk about other Yu-Gi-Oh stuff or just most general stuff. Uh, but if you're interested, there's definitely a link for you to use if you're interested. But as I've said before, subscribe if you're new here and you want to see more stuff. If you enjoyed this video, definitely drop a like on it. it. Helps out the algorithm a lot, which I definitely need to be saved from due to my own hubris and inactivity. But anyway, other than that, as always, guys, like I've already said, thanks for watching. Thanks for your time as usual and take care. I will see you in the next video.